sunflower cookies from 74. So these were part of the hippie health food craze, which I didn't know was a thing. Seems they enjoyed baking in more than one sense of the word. To a half cup of butter goes a cup of brown sugar. Mix. In goes two eggs. Half a cup of flour. A teaspoon of floof powder. And half a cup of wheat germ. Oh no. Move, Hollis. What's wheat germ? Nothing good. It has the pleasant taste of wood chips. Earthen. Yeah. Or let the set get all nice and miserable. The wheat germ just needs to swell up like an infection. Soaks up the butter in everyone's happiness. Next is one and a half cups of shelled sunflower seeds. This is just bird seed. Food of the birds. Avian. Oh no. <laughs> Do you have friends? Are they birds? Make this for them. Their little bird beaks and bird mouths will love it. Half cup of pumpkin seeds. Don't even chop them. No. Nope. Uh, yeah, they let their bird stomachs digest it. Feathery freaks. Uh, 3.50 for about 12 minutes. Now they can smell it. You know what birds can't do? Read my cookbook, as far as we know. Uh, mm -hmm. These taste like a damp park bench. Uh, Sorry, hippies, I'm with Nixon on this one. Uh. K2 defense biscuits from the Second World War. You know times must be tough when your biscuits start getting model numbers. <laughs> start with 25 grams of sugar, followed by 25 grams of a mild treacle. Ooh. Next up is 50 grams of lard. Ah, please get out of the box, please exit. That was only its first form. Oh. 70 grams of milk powder. Mm. Mix. Now 200 grams of gram flour. Do you know how hard it is to find gram flour? Hard. 15 grams of wheat germ. Uh, fresh wood chips. Uh, I've been told to keep this in the fridge so it stays disgusting for longer. Thank you again. Finally, a half teaspoon of salt. And a quarter teaspoon of bicarbonate. Come on! Uh, there we go. So these were a part of America's K-rations. Think of them like dystopian lunchboxes. Ooh, poke some holes in. 350 for about 15 minutes. What's that, Frank? You like my cookbook? He can't read. Mmm. These are the very definition of sustenance. Bit like a dog biscuit, but I would take these over hardtack. Deep fried cream eggs from 96. Yes, Easter is upon us, which means sweet tooths are at a fever pitch. However, I think this is going too far. All we do is make a batter of three quarter cups of flour, half teaspoon of floof powder, big pinch of salt plus a tablespoon of sugar, and of vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. Finally, a half cup of moo juice, and one egg beaten smooth. Now we fill a saucepan with about two inches of oil and get it hot. I'm using corn oil. Why? Because it's corn. Fire! About 375 Fahrenheit. Almost as hot as my cookbook. So these have been in the fridge. Woo! First we dredge in a bit of plain flour, then batter, then fry. Mm -hmm. Carefully drop. Fry until golden brown. <laughs> Surprisingly, this is not an American creation. They were born of chippies across the United Kingdom. Oh boy. Whoa. <laughs> but heavens above. I can only describe these as voluptuous. Marshmallow Bark from 79. The good thing about this recipe is it seems quick and easy, but the bad thing is that it comes from the state of Missouri. What goes on in Missouri? First, we assemble a double boiler. I'm good at this. Then we melt 12 ounces of white chocolate, either in bar form or a bag of chips. I'm using Gear Deli bars, because I prefer to rot my teeth expensively. Fire! Yes, you could just melt your chocolate in the microwave, but that makes too much sense. Why be practical when you can give the illusion of competency? We also need to add in about a tablespoon of vegetable shortening. You can also use coconut oil. While that melts, we measure out four cups of multicolored marshmallows. Woo! Be <laughs> pretty. Okay, now that this is ready, we're just gonna let it cool down for a little bit so it doesn't just immediately melt the marshmallows. You ready yet? Combine and mix. And into a lightly greased and lined casserole dish. Get in! Making sure everything's even and coated. To the fridge! <laughs> My cookbook for scale. Mmm. Mmm. Quite pleasant, really. It's a bit basic, but the kids will love it. Sweet and simple and Eastery. Panko cookies from 85. It's been said that there's a cookie for every occasion, and if so, this must be the cookie for when you descend into psychosis. Start with a half cup of butter, followed by a half cup of powdered sugar. <laughs> Next is two teaspoons of vanilla and one teaspoon of almond extract. Distilled nut. <laughs> Finally, three quarters of a cup of flour and three quarters of a cup of panko. The breadcrumbs. You say, Dylan, why would someone put breadcrumbs in cookie dough? It could be because of like illicit substances or like psychiatric disturbances, being held at gunpoint, these types of things. <laughs> Then we scoop, roll, dredge in more powdered sugar, and squish. 350 for about 13 minutes. Do not put my cookbook in the oven, though. It's flammable. Mm -hmm. Hello! Once they're cool, we dredge in powdered sugar again. Was the first time just for practice?
<laughs> this person is genius. <laughs> Because I figured out how to make something soft, chewy, and crunchy at the same time. It's a marvel. It's a good cookie. Magic oatmeal cookies from 85. Not only are these a two-ingredient cookie, but they also purport to be healthy. First, we take a very ripe banana. This one has passed away. Gone. Very nearly. Flash it. Dead. We mash. Nanner, no longer. And then we throw in just about a cup of quick oats. That's it. This is not a cookie. This is this is a wrong way to make oatmeal. But wait, it says we can also do this with a half cup of applesauce and the cup of quick oats. Just scoop them out. Then we squish them. Banana on the right. 350 for about 15 minutes. But just watch yours. Did I tell you that my book has a metallic title? I'm a simple man. What? It smells good. Let's do applesauce first. What? A cookie. Huh. Now banana. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. Banana is superior. Sorry. I guess everything's a cookie now. These are really fun and easy. For a healthy cookie, not bad. Another dump cake from 87. So I've actually already taken a dump in this kitchen before. We have a done dump. But instead of using chocolate cake and cherries, I was told I should have used yellow cake and peaches. So let's take a dump. Directly into an oiled casserole dish goes two 21 ounce cans of peaches and syrup. Draining the syrup from one of them. Uh oh. Today's dump requires the use of a can opener. It's a fairly painful condition. Then you dump! My bad for assuming there was only one way to take a dump. The Americans are rather imaginative. Dump! Frank, can you guess what we do with our box of cake mix? That's right! You dump! Last year we dumped on melted butter, but this recipe just has us put it on top. Three quarters of a cup. Boop. Then we bake our dump at 350 for about an hour. You can also dump my cookbook in your cart. Sorry. Ooh! Let it cool. Mmm. 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 Yeah, this is superior, but I still detest the concept. It's a loveless peach cobbler. Widowed and forlorn. <laughs> Sprinkle cookies from 1980. Now I relate to sprinkles because they're dainty, frivolous, and let's face it, just a little bit limp -wristed. All the things I was called in high school. And now, a cup of butter. Yeah. Only a quarter cup of sugar, plus half a cup of sweetened condensed milk. Interesting. And yes, I know I can spray the cup to make it easier to come out. But I didn't come out easily. Why should the milk have it easy? <laughs> a tablespoon of Nilla. Are you trying to marry me? Nilla. Beat! Now for two cups of flour, two teaspoons of floof powder. <laughs> Finally, we need in one and a half. Cups of sprinkles. Cups. You say, Dylan, that's a lot of sprinkles. I say, congratulations. You're very shrewd. This is daft. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, scoop. Dip in more sprinkles. <laughs> more sprinkles than flour. Huh? 325 for about 15 minutes. Did I tell you I have a cookbook? It's gonna be fun. Mmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. These are like the best birthday cake cookies. Mmm. Lime Jello Fudge from 68. Typically, fudge involves chocolate, and on the rare occasion it doesn't, it definitely shouldn't have jello in it. Into a saucepan goes three and a half cups of sugar. <laughs> that was half the bag. Quarter teaspoon of soda. Ten four, good buddy. <clears throat> Plus three ounces of lime jello. You ready for a party? <laughs> <laughs> Fruity. Cup and a half of mojo. That's milk, by the way. Then we cook to 234 degrees Fahrenheit. Ah! Oh, it's foaming. Please stop growing. Oh, oh, oh. Stop! Avast ye! Ow! Ow! It's got ranged attacks! I don't like this. Almost. Keep stirring all the way. Then remove from heat and into a bowl. A half cup of butter. Ah! Beat until thick. <sighs> thick! And into a greased and lined 8 inch. What is this? Chill until firm. Do you know what's already firm? My cookbook. It's a hardcover. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like summer camp, like baby bottle pop nostalgic. Huh. Fruity Pebble Cake from 1980. Fruity what? You heard me. Where am I? Fruity Pebbles into a blender. Into a blender? But you never put cereal in a blender before? Call yourself a chef. <laughs> Mood juice. Eggs. No. Eggy. Eggy. Yeah. Butter melted. <laughs> Get in. Sugar. Floof powder. That's baking powder, Nick. And then we just blend. Blend? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 350 for an hour. You like cereal, Nick? Yeah. You like men? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
a cheat lemon pie from 79. So this pie says it can be finished in two seconds, something I think is quite impressive, yet other lovers find it deeply unsatisfying. You can't win them all. Start with a can of sweetened condensed milk. Ooh. Then a whole can of thawed lemonade concentrate. You find these in the freezer section because they're frozen. <laughs> Pour it in. Next. The acid is thickening. Fold in a tub of Cool Whip. Get it! Ooh. Finally, into two pre-made graham cracker crusts. Oh, yes. To the freezer. Don't worry, I'm not going to speak about my cookbook. No, nope, not me. Good morning. By the way, this cost me five bucks. In this economy, two fifty a pie ain't bad. Oh, look it! <laughs> ah! Ah! Okay. This is out of the park. It's a frozen pie, but it's silky smooth. Oh. Prune whip from 1927. Now, if you've never had a prune, good. It's best not to engage with the enemy. Prunes are just plums post-mortem. The Draugr of the Fruit Kingdom. Start with 15 of them all chopped up nice and disgusting. Love, I love it here. Why 15 of them? Why any of them? Why prune? How prune? <laughs> then into a pan to be cooked with a half cup of water. Fire! See, prunes are primarily used because they're a stellar laxative. You say, Dylan, how else are they used? Threateningly. Now we strain it and let it cool down, preferably forever, never coming back. And into a bowl goes the whites of two eggies. Pinch of salt, beating stiff. <laughs> Cup of sugar. <laughs> Ooh! And we fold in a bit of vanilla and our cold prunes. <laughs> into a serving dish, well chilled. My cookbook. Garnished with slivered almonds. You say, Dylan, that's not cooked. Correct. Uncooked whips such as these were very popular in the 20s, alongside dysentery. Uh, good heavens. Oh no! Oh, this is foul! Oh dear. Onion soup bread from 68. Now soup's lovely if you're sick or born before 1912, but it's typically not used to make bread. Typically. Now we start with three and a third cups of flour, which is normal. Boop. Then we add in two envelopes of onion soup mix, which is like a sliding glass door, unhinged. Ooh. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Sleuth. Next up, two cups of buttermilk. Get in! <laughs> in goes a cup of cheddar cheese. I tell you, cheese makes everything better, except car accidents. Trust me, I've tried. <laughs> Please got very mad. Ooh. To a greased loaf pan, cooperate. A bit more cheese on top. Then bake at 350 for 50 to 60 minutes. Can I tell you about my cookbook? Oh, that's fair. Ooh. It smells amazing. Look at that. <laughs> this slabs. It is a banging savory cheesy bread. That's great. A very good idea. Strawberry fluffies from 76. Like my hookup, some baking trends just come and go. It is what it is. And one of those trends was to bake something with as little effort as possible. First, we'll need a box of strawberry cake mix. I don't like boxes. People get buried in them. <laughs> it's pink. <laughs> then we just shove in a tub of Cool Whip. <laughs> As you can see, this recipe is quite approachable, unlike landmines. <laughs> Stir it up like some good drama. We might say we like our friends, but we <laughs> can't stand them. Smelling a little fruity. I'm partial to fruitiness. I am. Okay. Finally, we scoop, then into powdered sugar. Mm. And place. 350 for about 12 minutes. You see this book? I write it it. Mmm. Wrote it it myself. You know, these don't look very fluffy. Oh. But they taste fluffy. Insanely soft. Loses points for laziness, but soft, fruity, and good. A chocolate syrup cake from 87. Now there's many uses for chocolate syrup in the kitchen and a few in the bedroom. Ha! But does it make a good cake? We begin with a half cup of butter. <laughs> creamed with a cup of sugar. <laughs> Four eggies. Vanilla mix. And now for one and a half cups of chocolate syrup. Seems excessive. That's mm, a lot of syrup. <laughs> Leave it to the Americans. If it looks like oil, it must be good. Dry ingredients are a cup and a third of flour and a half teaspoon of floof powder. Boop. Get it! It's actually quite a nice batter. We'll need a greased nine inch. You heard me. And it smells good. I mean, no, it's wrong. We bake at 325 for around an hour. Check yours with a toothpick. You know our book's out this month? This month. Go look at it. Whoa! Grease your pan well. Mine almost stuck. The icing is just a cup of powdered sugar. Adding syrup until thick. What kind of Yankee Doodle dandy shit? Why do you look good? Senseless! I'm going to hemorrhage. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that is a solid easy cake. Huh. Darn good idea. Cheers. Peanut brittle from 1909. Now I ain't never done did a peanut brittle, but I done been heard of it before. Three cups of Spanish peanuts. What are Spanish peanuts? <laughs> well, like other Europeans, these still have the skins on. Mm. Now into a saucepan goes two cups of sugar, one cup of the newly invented corn syrup, it's witchcraft, and a half cup of water. Mixy, mixy, 
Now we cook this to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Fire! Bubble, bubble! Once we reach that temperature, the firm ball stage, we add in the nuts. I don't know what a firm ball is, but they should probably see a doctor. Oh! Keep stirring until we reach 300 degrees, at which point we remove from heat and add in a bit of butter and a pinch of baking soda. Who needs measurements? Off! Butter! Ah! Now quickly, we need a pinch. How much is the pinch? I don't know! Whoa! Creamy! And quickly onto a prepared baking sheet! That was, that was very stressful. Now we just let this cool as you read my cookbook. Please! Last instruction is a simple one, but it's a little bit barbaric. <laughs> It would seem you don't have to quite apply that much force. There's peanut brittle in the dining room. Never thought I'd be busting nuts on camera, but here we are. Oh, mm. you know, this is pretty good, but you, you gotta have some strong chompers. Oh. Tis distinctly old fashioned, take that how you will. Though if you're allergic to peanuts, that's uh, one hell of a way to go out. Rollo Ritz Sandwiches from 79. I'll tell you, I wasn't gonna do this one because it seems rather pedestrian, unlike cars. First up, we'll be needing some crackers. We've got some in a box here and one in a t-shirt. Use as many as you'd like. Come on. Oh, this feels familiar. Lay half face down on a baking sheet. Get some Rollos. <laughs> Throw them on the floor. <laughs> Please remove the wrappers. Aluminium has no nutritional value. And you just place them on top. Then we bake at 350 just until they're soft, around three minutes. But keep an eye on them. Yours may get softer sooner, depending on your level of arousal. Did you know my book comes out soon? Of course you did. I never shut up about it. Woo! Toasty. Then we carefully sandwich. This has no right being this satisfying. Yeah! Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Yes. They're perfect. Not because they're gourmet or anything special. They're just a really good idea. A really good tasting idea. Secret cornbread from 87. Now I want you to try and guess what the third ingredient in this bread is because I can guarantee you're not gonna get it. <laughs> it's an easy three, two, one recipe, so we're gonna start with three achy feet, followed by two boxes of Jiffy cornbread mix. Let me in. <laughs> Finally, one entire 15 ounce jar of cheese whiz. <laughs> Heat it up first because it currently resembles silicone. I'm really looking forward to this. Cheesy, all right. Cheese whiz. <laughs> and into a well-creased 9x13. It's uh, extraterrestrial. Be sure to smooth it out. Thank you, I'd hate to have an uneven disaster. That would be terrible. Bake at 375 until golden brown. 20 to 25 minutes. My cookbook, Baking Yesteryear, is officially out today. Yes, the time has come. You know, I'm scared because this smells good. Ooh! <laughs> Seriously, this is killer. If you don't believe me, try it. Okay. This is dangerous. Poor man's ice cream from 49. Like our fleeting youth. <laughs> Summer's almost over, but there's still enough time to enjoy some ice cream. We start with a can of evaporated milk chilled in the fridge overnight with an equally cold bowl. My fingers are stuck. <laughs> Next, a cup and a half of powdered sugar and a bit of vanilla. Only three ingredients. Now to whip. Sure, we all know you can whip cream and depending on your tolerance for bedroom adventures, your significant other, but I didn't think you could whip evaporated milk. Let's see. <laughs> you can. Once it's thick and foamy, we throw it in the freezer for at least an hour. I got a haircut. Ooh. Now we whip again. Oh, wow. Look at it. Now we can have it as is or return it to the freezer until it sets. Did you know that you made baking yesteryear a number one New York Times bestseller? You're crazy. Thank you. That's long enough. I want ice cream. Ooh, ooh. Mm. Mm. Ooh. That, that this is, it is incredible. It's so smooth. This is no substitution. This is a masterpiece. Thank you, dead lady. Spoon bread from 1911. Haven't a clue what this is. It could be spoons made of bread or bread made of spoons. Into a saucepan goes two cups of water plus a cup and a quarter of cornmeal. Cornmeal bothers me. On one hand, it's vegetable dust, and on the other hand, I have fingers. Fire! Cook until thick. What's considered thick, I don't know, but don't ask a man, because you'll get conflicting evidence. Thick! Next up, two tablespoons of butter. <laughs> two cups of mood juice. It's very wet. Wet and loose. Yolks of two eggies. <laughs> and separately, we beat the whites. <laughs> Fold with two teaspoons of floof powder. What is this supposed to be? What do we bake this in? I have no idea. It could be a shoe for all I know. Oh, why is it so wet? But we bake at 350 for about 45 minutes to an hour. I'm, I'm baking soup. Oh, my cookbook. Oh, oh dear. This is not working. Spoon bread. Spoon bread. I think I have a college degree. Hmm. It tastes quite good. Texture, no. Is that mean to say? Do people eat this? Ah. 
Seven Up and Milk. Delicious. From the 1940s. This is a real thing. So it's half milk, also known as moo juice. Yes! And half Seven Up. I don't like milk. Do you like milk? I don't. I'm an oat milk girly. I'm really worried about this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh. I've got it all over my face. <laughs> yeah. Tastes like itchy milk. Like if you made a key lime pie meringue LaCroix. <laughs> you, it's, it's a, a LaCroix it's, float. It's a 7-Up float that has been sitting out in the sun <laughs> for like four hours and yet it's still slightly cold. Yeah. It, it is not expressly bad, but... I'm not going to be out here like, mm. <laughs> 7-Up Milk. <laughs>A Texas sheet cake from 76. I don't know much about Texas. I'm told things there are large. Start with two cups of flour and two cups of sugar. Woo! Texas got its way too with the flour, which is backwards. What are you up to? Now into a saucepan goes a cup of water, a whole cup of butter, much, quarter cup of cocoa, and a big pinch of salt. Now we boil it. Why? I'm just gonna listen to the Texans. Fire! Ooh, we just dump hot, 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 hot. It's smooth. Half cup of buttermilk. The vanilla. Teaspoon of baking soda. Two beaten eggies. I went to a greased 15 by 10. If you don't have one of these, it probably means you don't own one of these unless you stole it and I won't tell. 325 for 20 to 25 minutes. Texans would love my book. Hello. For the frosting, we briefly boil a third of a cup of mood juice, quarter cup of cocoa, and a half cup of butter. Fire! Done! Whisk in two and a half cups of powdered sugar. I can feel my teeth falling out of my face right now. Hello. Cup of chopped pecans. Oh, oh my. Texas is scrumdumptious. A Castella cake from 1980. Now this recipe came to Flushing Queens from Taiwan. I was also disappointed to learn that Flushing Queens is a place in New York and not a show about plumbers and drag. Start with eggs, which answers the question of who came first. Normally the guy. Seven yolks, seven whites. These are fresh eggies from the business end of the chicken. Careful! To the yolks, we add a half cup of oil, half cup of mood juice, a bit of nilla or almond extract, and a cup of flour, or cake flour if you're pretentious. I'm joking, there is a difference, the pretentiousness. And we whisk this all together, which is very odd. Ooh, it looks like mustard. When it comes to beating egg whites, typically we like things stiff. It's no fun pushing rope. But here we only beat the soft peaks with a half cup of sugar and a pinch of salt. <sighs> then we combine. Ooh, oh boy. Into a nine inch parchment slung square. Oh, it's wet. Finally into a 300 degree oven with a preheated water bath. Come on. For roughly an hour, but check with a toothpick. Don't forget about my book, it's very good. No, I'm not biased. <laughs> That's money. It is the most perfect pillow. Plain lovely. Pumpkin cracker bread from 75. Yes, it's fall again, which means it's time for baking, rewatching Twilight, ruminating about your profound lack of physical touch. We start with a whole box of graham crackers because leave it to the Americans to make bread using anything but ingredients for bread. Crush them all up. This is roughly four cups of crumbs and several tears from artisan bread makers. Into this, three teaspoons of floof powder. Boop, mix. Now into a zebra bowl goes two chicken eggs. Well, thank heavens you specified. I was at risk of using my locally sourced ostrich eggs. Facetious little sh eggy. Now for a 15 ounce can of pumpkin. If you don't have a can opener, that's quite fine. You could always resort to barbarism and begin communicating using only vowels. <coughs> Can't hide from me. Beat. Combine. Meh. And that's it. Hmm. Basically three ingredients. Into a greased loaf pan. 350 for 15 minutes to an hour. Woo! Can I show you something? It's my cookbook. Oh, sorry, I tricked you. Finally, cover with a canned frosting. Wow, it's splendid. There's no butter or oil, yet it's surprisingly moist. Gorgeous! A 7-Up Salad from 1970. We start with two big packs of lemon jello, because one would be too easy and three's a felony. <laughs> Cup of boiling water. Mix. Cup of cold water. Once you get to this color, you are severely dehydrated. Next is two small bottles of 7-Up. <sighs> two sliced bananas. These aren't quite ripe yet, but some things are easier when they're firm to grasp and, and such. Small can of crushed pineapple. Drain the juice. <gasps> Cup of mini marshmallows. Lemon lime fever dream. Pour this into something, preferably the garbage. Oh, what? It's just chunky. What is why? To the fridge. Good morning. It isn't. Now the top becomes the bottom. That's called being versatile. <laughs> What is that? Sugar, pineapple juice, flour, egg heat cooked. What? Mixed with whipped cream. Ugh. Ugh. Cheese. I'm not joking. Cheese. The one below it has olives. What would possess? Protect yourself with my book. Oh. 
<clears throat> this person has been to a dark place. Oh, it lingers. Seen bad things. Reese's bread from 82. October is gone, meaning it's officially baking season. Hear that, Henry? Long live Christmas. Start by unwrapping 12 peanut butter cups. Certainly an unusual way to start a bread. American ingenuity knows no bounds. Make sure to take off the diapers. Not very nutritious. Also, are these Reese's or Reese's? Seems to be a disagreement. Now a half cup of butter. Melting it all over a double boiler. Fire! Peanut butter chocolate. Remove from heat and beat in for eggs. You don't want them scrambled. Egg -y. Look at that. Lastly, two cups of Bisquick or any pancake mix. Is that all? It's absurd, but it's actually quite a smart recipe. That you never made a bread like this. An optional cup of chalky chips. Optional, my ass. I kind of want to add some peanut butter chips. Going hog wild. Woo. And into a greased loaf pan. Mm. 350 for 45 to 55 minutes. If you leave it in for too long, you risk pregnancy. <clears throat> you risk it getting dry. Henry says he's dying to read my book. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Whoa. It's perfect gooey peanut buttery chocolate. Moist and gooey. <laughs> An eggnog pie from 64. Yes, whether you're feeling festive or inconsolably heartbroken, dessert is always the answer. And our starts with two cups of cold eggnog. I bought this one because it's a glass bottle. Come on! Ah, bosh. Now we mix in a big box of vanilla pudding. The 5.1 ounce. Don't get the little one. You'll ruin Christmas. Ah. Mix until it's thick. If you want to spice it up, you could try butterscotch or chocolate or some light role play. Fold in a cup of whipped cream. Feel free to use Cool Whip. I'm just going to beat it myself because it's going to be a lonesome Christmas. Ah. I'd call that a cup. No need to be precise. Your in-laws will still find a way to insult you. Oh, that's lovely. Liquor, if you'd like. I prefer men. This is the rum of my country, and it's the best. Woo. Finally, into a graham cracker shell. Woo. Fridge wait for at least four hours. I'm told my book is a good gift. <laughs> Morning. Woo. Bit of nutmeg. <laughs> Ow! The smoothest. Oh. This is Christmas on a plate. Pfefanusa from 1890. I'm told this is a German Christmas cookie, roughly translating to pepper nuts, which sounds like it must sting, but hey, whatever gets you going. Into a saucepan goes a half cup of butter, half cup of molasses. Why is it so sticky? Quarter cup brown sugar, quarter cup honey. Release me! Picking heavy casualties. Now we place on fire. What? Forgot we're a few centuries behind. Fire! As soon as it simmers, turn it off. The dry ingredients are two and a half cups of flour, teaspoon of black pepper, two tablespoons of le bou... Mm, le couch? Oh, God. <laughs> Please, not that. Lebkuchengewürz. Lebkuchengewürz. Is that an ingredient or an airstrike? It's just a spice mix of a teaspoon each of cloves, nutmeg, cardamom, seminary, mace, and aniseed. Transfer the wet to a big bowl. Whiskey in a beaten eggy. And a, oh God. And a teaspoon of potash. <laughs> we don't bake with potash anymore for the same reasons we don't attempt to cure indigestion with lobotomies. It's calcium carbonate. Bring it all together. <laughs> we gotta make them tiny. 350 for about 13 minutes. You can either dust them in powdered sugar or traditionally dump them in the thick, simple icing. Psst. <laughs> oh, gee, they're so cozy. These are nice. Grimmit. A figgy pudding from 1890. Start with a cup of dried figs. Would have never guessed. And a cup of dates chopped. You don't want to choke on your date. <clears throat> Boil with two cups of sherry. Sherry is the potpourri of liquor. It was once very fashionable, back when people bathed once a week and wondered why there were rats in their wigs. Fire! Once this boils for a short while, we throw in some baking soda. Oh, God. Ah! It smells really festive, like Febreze in a crypt. Cup of brown sugar and a half cup of lard. Lard! <clears throat> Wet ingredients are a beaten eggy and just a tablespoon of rum. <laughs> then beat with the pasted fruit and sherry. Uh, just looks like I microwaved a squirrel. Uh, mix. Beat into two and a half cups of flour, teaspoon of soda, teaspoon of cloves. Uh, bake or steam this. That's all I get. We'll meet in the middle. Here goes nothing. It is snowing and this is my book. Huh. Ooh. <laughs> what? God. Are you supposed to eat this for Christmas or for punishment? Stodgy. Tastes Dickensian. I'm sure people loved it back then when they ate lead paint and wood chips. <laughs> Peppermint bark from 1980. What do dogs and trees have in common? Neither can file taxes, nor can they eat peppermint bark, but we can. Start with two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. <laughs> Melt it over a pot of simmering water. Fire! Don't rush it, it's not a race. It's Christmas. But Dylan, you have to temper it. Says who? Once melted, we spread it into a parchment lined 9 by 13. You could also use a 13 by 9, but they look more like this. 
just want to eat it. Wait for that to harden a little bit, but not set, or else the next layer won't adhere. You can put it in the fridge. Now we do the same, but with white chocolate. You can differentiate them by way of Uggs and leggings. This time we need three cups. <laughs> Once melted, stir in a teaspoon of peppermint extract. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> now we have to beat up some candy canes. You don't have to use the whole box. You can beat a few and suck on the rest. <sighs> candy cane wrappers are a special type of punishment. I'm, go I'm going to hemorrhage. I'll have a blue. Then just leave it to set or to the fridge. Are you feeling festive? My book is festive. Three, two, one. Ah. Oh. Mmm. Christmas candy. That's marvelous. Ohio Buckeyes from 1980. You know, until now, I thought Buckeyes was a condition similar to buck teeth, but it appears to be a candy. Sorry I'm late. I took the wrong exit at Cape Canaveral and ended up getting probed for free. <laughs> Begin with half a cup of soft butter, followed by a cup and a half of peanut butter. It says chunky, okay, smooth, preferred. Where have I heard that before? Next, you're gonna tell me I need to be 6'5 and well in that. <laughs> Beat together with a pinch of salt and a tablespoon of vanilla. Oh boy, it's butter on butter. No one tell Paula Dean she'll bust in like the Kool-Aid man. Three and a half cups of powdered sugar. <laughs> Two. Oh, pardon me, this is getting rather stiff. Problematically stiff, like puberty. There we go. If it's too dry, just add a bit of water. Scoop. Apparently, these are named after the seed of the buckeye tree, which kills humans and cattle. Ohio, you, you, you do you. In the freezer for a bit. Meanwhile, two and a half cups of semi-sweet chalky chips. Plus about a tablespoon of shortening or coconut oil. Just helps it stay smooth. Double boiler. Fire! Toothpick and dip. Ooh. But not all the way. You gotta leave a little bald spot. Done! To the fridge. Mmm. Whoa! That's just a, a good little snack. Um. A coffee loaf from 59 for the man who hasn't the time to both breakfast and have his cup of joe. Oh, the 50s. When breakfast was a verb, baseball was relevant and I would have had to have had a wife. Dry ingredients are two cups of flour, two teaspoons of floof powder, <laughs> pinch of salt, <laughs> salt, and a teaspoon of simonium. Dissolve half a cup of instant coffee in the same amount of boiling water. Half a cup? <laughs> like 20 cups of coffee. <laughs> Ooh, this looks like 10W40. Let me just let this fester. Now creamy, oh! Cream together a half cup of shortening or butter with three quarters of a cup of sugar and a third cup of preem. If you're curious, you're probably not straight, but that's unrelated. Preem was a powdered creamer. You can still buy powdered creamer if you like the taste of wood glue. Mmm, three eggies. <laughs> Finally, alternate adding the dry and the motor oil and the coffee oh. to a greased loaf. Ooh. 325 for about an hour. Check with the toothpick. Look. <laughs> Lovely. I'd send this to a coffee lover, I'll tell you that.